Hello and welcome. Children's rights organisations say, utterly unsurprisingly, that lockdown wasn't good for kids, bad for their mental health, 50% up in terms of those seeking help, bad for emotional development, according to a survey of parents, and bad for their education, with a 10% fall in the expected standards in reading, writing and maths. This is in a report for the UK COVID inquiry in the UK Parliament alongside 5,000 litres of whitewash. It may be that the like of Save the Children and others, this report is from various children's rights organisations, are now well-meaning, though that is questionable. But these issues were flagged up and screamed about at the time by at least some perfectly respectable educational experts. This is pointed out in the report, but many of these charities said even nothing or actively supported as good disciples of the New World Order, whatever zany crackpot nonsense the zany crackpots were able to conjure from their metaphorical crack pipes of wisdom. Research in child development shows that we have enough disruptors in recent years to cause even the most robust child to wobble in their development. Will this report change any of that? The introduction to this report talks of great sacrifices to slow the spread of the virus, that messaging was confusing, and Rules were not always clear. It commends the valiant efforts of experts and campaigners to ensure that the children received some protection. And any number of woke touchstones are touched upon poverty, racial minorities, mental health, inequalities in society, and of course, the need to put plans in place for the future, for future pandemics. Of course, none of these woke touchstones would be so well served in terms of actually reducing the impact of discrimination or poverty or mental health issues than by, for example, saying we won't do this in any form again. That isn't what they say. It's true that some organisations, individuals and professional bodies raise concerns, some early on, particularly around the prioritisation of, for example, keeping DIY stores open as a priority, but not schools. But all of these people, for the most part anyway, were on board with the fundamentally flawed assumption that any of this had to happen in the first place. Some of these hysterical worshippers were sending their key workers home to hide away. Teachers and teachers' unions particularly were vociferous in protecting their members from very little indeed. My point is that had these organisations supposed concerns been addressed, then we would have had schools full of boys in their bubbles and girls in their hazmat suits being addressed by teachers ready for Armageddon, because that is what they would have facilitated because they didn't stand against it all, or indeed, really, anything. Full stop. No question of doing that to the children is what they should have said, but no, they didn't. And now they whitewash neglect with sincerity in their concerns and parade their woke credentials with solutions that reenact the terror and, handily for them, perpetuate another generation of victims subject to any number of woke victimizations that they've decided upon for them to be concerned about. After careful consideration of the facts, I find, one, you are unforgivably awful, foolish and hysterical. Two, you must acknowledge this. 
You are probably not the appropriate people to deal with these matters, though heaven knows who is. And three, fair enough, it has happened, and whatever can be done should be done to help get this generation back on track. This has been Paul. Do not remain seated.